Greetings everyone, Zach here, and I wanted to take a few moments to discuss Amanita muscaria and the proper preparation technique um, to best utilize its active compounds, which are harmonious with the body, and to minimize the interference of the more disharmonious compounds within the mushroom. I have used this mushroom probably about 100 times uh, and I've sampled a variety of different sources, um, different specimen from different parts of the world and I've learned that each of them has a uniquely different effect and it seems that um, using this preparation technique um, you're really able to sample and experience the finer points of what each specimen has to offer. Um, I really truly believe that this plant is something which is profoundly beneficial for our well-being when approached respectfully and prepared properly. It has been uh, very good to me in offering peace and um, healing in my body, uh, my vertebrae alignment and uh, pain in, in my body in particular, and these uh, effects are actually lasting um, beyond the experience itself, so it is not limited to just a sedative or a pain-killing effect, but rather actually stimulates the uh, realignment of the body and uh, the uh, energy as I would perceive it. Um, not to mention the uh, lessons and the uh, guidance and the vibrational benefit of calming the mind. Um, anyhow, to get straight to it, what you need is some Amanita muscaria. And I don't have any of those on me right now. You need a mason jar. You need really clean water. Uh, I recommend using um, spring water. Um, distilled or reverse osmosis I would use as well, but uh, I definitely recommend not using tap water. I feel that it may interfere with the benefit. Uh, you need some type of straining device, pasta strainer. Ideally, you have a second straining device, which is even more fine. This is a uh, nut milk bag, or a, I think that's what I purchased it as. It probably goes under different names too. A uh, really fine uh, nylon type material uh, or a cheesecloth that would also work as your secondary strainer. So what you do is first you get your mushrooms out and you express gratitude towards them and you uh, show your intention and ask them to guide you um, in healing and whatever purpose that you're seeking to gain out of the mushroom. Uh, I think that this is particularly important because ultimately the experience is going to come down not only to your biochemical reactions uh, with the alkaloids in the mushroom, but also down to uh, the dictation of potential itself. And potential in this instance is relative to your own input as well as the input of the essence of the mushroom, as well as other external variables, which makes it a little bit more complex. Anyhow, you give thanks. And then you take your mushroom caps and you break them up into little pieces. So let's say your Amanita cap is this big. I would break it up into little sections about that big. You don't have to be precise. Just feel it out. Just rip little pieces. And you put them all in your mason jar. So you take all of your Amanita and you put them in. I normally, when I prepare it, prepare about a jar's worth at a time. Um, next, you're going to cover it with your spring water. And uh, a lot of people ask me, um, how much water do you add to it? And the answer to that is, uh, it's really up to you. Um, the active alkaloids are so water soluble that in my experience, I have never um, yet used too little water. You want, you know, if you, your caps come up to there, you obviously want them to be fully submerged in the water. You know, if they came up to here, I would probably fill it up about there, but it really doesn't matter. What is important is that you know exactly how much you started with, um, and then you're able to measure your volume at the end. I like using these mason jars that have the little uh, milliliter and cup measurements on the side for this purpose. Um, the uh, choice of how much to prepare um, is up to you. The Amanita Sun Tea will usually start to ferment um, in the fridge um, about one to two weeks late um, after you prepare it and uh, it, in my experience it's still viable after it ferments um, it's slightly heavier on the stomach 
slightly, but it, it's really not much worse. It starts to get this interesting apple cider vinegar-like flavor, but mushroom-flavored apple cider vinegar, which is a bit strange, but I kind of find it fascinating. Um, anyways, so you cover up your mushrooms, put a cap on it, or you can cover it with your cheesecloth just to keep bugs and things out. Then you set it somewhere in direct sunlight. Um, the idea behind this is that the sun rays will interact with the compounds which are coming into the water and cause chemical changes. Um, the person that taught this technique to me explained that he believes that the UV rays um, do the same conversion process of abotenic acid into muscimol as does heat though the UV rays do not damage the muscimol end product and thus the Amanita sun tea will wind up more potent than an Amanita tea using heat. So the water I add is room temperature and I cover it and I set it in sunlight and I normally feel it out a certain spot um, outside or uh, in a windowsill or whatever um, but the more direct sun contact you can get the better however i've done this on cloudy days and it still seems effective um, move it around a little bit um, come back every half hour hour shake it up get, get it all uh, well saturated you'll see the color of the water start to absorb the um, the pigments and the mushroom very quickly and um, from my experience, it's it's amazing how water soluble the active compounds are. It, amazing! It doesn't take very long at all for it to start absorbing. Uh, I recommend three to seven hours as your soak time, uh, or your steeping time. But uh, really, it you could probably do it less. You could probably do it one to two hours. Uh, but I I think it's better to uh, make sure you give it enough time to appropriately uh, absorb into the water fully. So. Anyways, so after that amount of time, you're gonna take your cap off. You're gonna put your bowl. You're gonna have. You're, you need a bowl too, I guess. Put this over the top of the bowl. Rest it. Pour your amanita and your sun tea. Shake it around. Get all the little cap bits in there. And then you've got your sun tea left in here, and you got all your mushroom bits in here. Obviously, and you're gonna press real hard down in there. And try to get you'll you'll when you press really hard you'll see it, it looks almost like a uh, syrupy or honey like consistency will come out of the mushrooms and from my experience I think this is particularly important uh, and then you're gonna take some fresh water so a little bit more spring water just drizzle just a little bit on top not a lot it's not and you don't need enough to have it wash over it you want them to rehydrate after you squeeze them really well and you do it again squeeze 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 and you rewet it again a third time and squeeze it down. Um, I do three high ingrain uh, numerological significance in um, all plant preparations. Um, so three has seemed of significance to me. Feel free to do less or more as you see fit. Um, at this point you have got your Amanita tea in a bowl that is relatively well strained. The only final step is to go ahead and use your secondary strainer which is more fine you know, put that inside of there, or you can do it with the cheesecloth. And then you're going to pour your mushroom, not spill any, have it go through, and then this will catch the last little bits of sediment in there. Squeeze out the rest of the tea, then your little bit of sediment is caught here. You got your mushroom matter in here. Um, politely and respectfully let them go back to the earth and compost them with the same amount of love and intention as you put into your formula at the beginning and then you take your Amanita tea at the end and this may or may not be Amanita tea uh, however this is exactly what it looks like it looks very similar to other teas, a nice golden red color. The water amount, like I said, is not important, but what is important is that you have a formula in mind uh, so that you know how much you are working with. So if you started out with, let's say, 33.3 grams of Amanita, then you can use any amount of water, but in the end, you want to make sure that you are using a uh, 
volumetric ratio in correlation to the amount of weight that you started with. So there are two tablespoons per one fluid ounce of water. So if you have eight fluid ounces, then that means you have 16 tablespoons. So let's say I had that as my end product. I would take 33.3 divided by 16. That comes out to 2.08125. That means that in each tablespoon, there is 2.08125 grams of Amanita muscaria uh, infusion. So from there, you can uh, gauge your doses. And I guess that's almost warrants a second video about um, dosage and how much to utilize. Um, but I think with any teacher, it's best to start slow, see how your body reacts, um, approach it respectfully, and let it guide you intuitively after you are uh, with it, with the teacher. Um, generally, when I use Amanita, I will use it in a stairwell fashion where you retake more of it, or you redose more of it incrementally. Um, this seems to offset nausea and allows you to climb up to the desired level without um, as much disorientation and with uh, even more minimized physical discomfort. Please respect this mushroom and work to minimize the stigma against it. It is uh, a plant that seems fairly selective. It is not something that everyone resonates with, and that's part of the beauty of it. Uh, rather than approaching it with expectations and demanding uh, profound you know, psychedelic effects or whatever, I encourage you to approach it neutrally um, and utilize a low dose and just see how it reacts with you. If you don't feel resonant, maybe it's not meant for you, you know, or maybe it's meant for you at a later time. But, you know, it's it's very different in that regard. Um, but I believe that when you're utilizing this uh, method of preparation and with the right intention and uh, respect, that I think, for, or not even think, from my experience, it seems that uh, a pretty high percentage of people do value and benefit from it. Uh, yeah, and like I said, there's different types, and each type has extremely different effects. So please, uh, if you don't vibe with it, please don't generalize and just say, these mushrooms just crap, like I hear all the time, and it drives me crazy. And, uh, nothing is just crap. I mean, we don't biochemically agree with everything. Uh, we don't spiritually and resonate with everything. We don't mentally, uh, agree with everything. But that doesn't mean anything's inherently crap. So, respect life and reality. And, uh, I wish you all profound and uh, beneficial experiences with this plant, other plants, as well as your life progresses outside of the realm of using plants. Blessed be.